On this episode of Star Wars Time Show, the dudes will be talking new toys, of course. We got some new pops and new black series, for you prequel lovers, that is. We're going to dive into a 70s-style fan art film creation that everyone needs to see. We're going to reminisce about Mark Hamill's first audition for Star Wars. Greg Grumberg's got something to tell us about Tross, or he's at least teasing it over and over, so we're going we're gonna to speculate on what that could be. We finally found out who Ming-Na Wen is playing in the Mando, so of course we're going to talk about that. We got a TV spot to dice up as well, and then it is the primetime show, so we'll be ending with the top five Star Wars fan artist features of the week. Cue the music. Welcome back to a brand new episode of Star Wars Time Show. It's Matt and Nick, and yes, I'm shot out of the cannon, and no, I didn't just go skiing. I'm just happy because I'm talking Star Wars with my buddy Nick, and as you heard, we got plenty of stuff to talk about, including some juicy stuff from Mando, which at the time of this recording is seven days away, at least for us in the U.S. I've been reading about the shit going on in the U.K., and I feel horrible for you people over there. That is ridiculous what's going on with Sky TV and Disney and how you guys are not getting Disney Plus next week. That is a shame, but we'll get there. It's a killer. It's awful, Nick. But before we, you know, get into the Disney Plus stuff, let's go ahead and talk about some toys. You know me. I like to collect stuff. I like to spend way more money than I make on toys. And sometimes I take them out for photo shoots because why not? If you're going to spend the money, you might as well dress these things up, make them feel sexy, and take some pictures. So... First up, we got a whole new wave of Funko Pops and Mystery Minis. They're both from Funko, geared towards the rise of Skywalker. So um, these, yeah, I mean, what I was going to say is I've never seen Mystery Minis before. I've never. So, so what, do, what do you think about the minis, Nick? I mean, is that something you could see maybe throwing up on your desk at work? Or oh, you, dude, yes. Like this is so. Um, I used to subscribe when Loot Crate still had the Firefly cargo crate box. I would subscribe to that, get a bunch of like, I think it was every two months I would get a box in, get some shit. And they would have these mystery minis in there for the Firefly figures. I don't know if they were the mystery minis brand, but they were like small ones. Like you said, desk sitters. This shit. Oh, yeah, dude. If I had my hands on some of these on a fucking Sith Trooper or Zori Bliss. uh, Here's the problem with these. Especially for someone like you, that's not in uh, much of a collector. They're they're fucking blind bags. Really? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> oh, 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 you, you basically have to throw down and buy a full case to get the the full line, or get real lucky because uh, you don't get to pick which ones you get. Dude, that sucks. Yeah, because I could see it. Like I, I'm going out and fucking buying these. I'm like, oh yeah, dude. I just want to get a fucking, you know, I want to get the Zori Bliss, and I just get like fucking. 15 Allegiant yeah, General you, Prides. Or, <laughs> or, or Akbar's kid, who doesn't yeah, yeah. even have a name. I don't think, yeah, he's just he's an exclusive think... to one of the places. But, uh, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do. I've got some minis actually sitting on my desk. I get them through the Smuggler's Bounty boxes, which we just did an unboxing for the most recent box everyone can check out on YouTube. But, yeah, I got them sitting right here on, on the desk. There's I got a... Tarful, a Maul, an Old Man Luke, a Chewie, a Vader, a Jabba the Hut. Nice. He's got a Sheev yeah. over there and his purple. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know, dude. I, I've fallen so far away from the the chibi aesthetic in terms of collectibles. I mean, I, yeah. I was so, like, we're talking my balls and your balls deep into the Funko <laughs> Pop line for, for years. I mean, 2010, when it kicked off, I, I was just like, the Kool-Aid, and went nuts. And now I, I have a hard time just even appreciating them, even though I, I still I still do look at them like little pieces of art. So as we move on to the, the new Pops, like I could really get into these Knights of Ren Pops, especially this, what do they call it? A hematite chrome. Yeah, hematite chrome. Yeah, I, I don't know what hematite is. They look pretty cool the way that it, you know, is show, shown here on the Knights of Ren. But, like, 
this is another thing, again, not being a toy collector. I didn't know that they made super-sized pops. So these are 10-inch tall pop figures. Yeah, those two Kylo, it looks like, and Target's been carrying a lot of those. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know, dude. They, they look good. I'm not going to lie. Like, pops have gotten better and better, which is odd because I collected them when they're as basic as possible. They all had the same pose. It was that Tommy Tough guy. You know, the arms were flared out like, Ugh, Yeah. Ugh. But now they actually have, like, uh, sculpted details, but I, I can't get into it. I mean, even the Star Wars <laughs> ones I don't collect anymore, and, and a lot of it is Funko's fucking fault for gluing the goddamn bases to the figures. Once yeah. they started that, that was the beginning of the end for me. It's like, there should have never been bases in the first place, they shouldn't have fucking bobbleheads, and you definitely shouldn't super glue these little bitches to their bases. It, it's mm-hmm. stupid. Yeah, I mean, they completely just didn't take into account that people like you and you know sir dork and everybody else in the community would use these as like figures and you know central central pieces for photography and for art and stuff like that they were just like oh people are just gonna like put these on bookshelves they're gonna put them on their desks and it doesn't matter like they just sit on bases but yeah for somebody like you who had a passion and who had a drive to take photography and incredible you know pictures with these figures the fucking stand ruins everything. Like, oh, it does. You, I mean, don't get... They've had stands from day one. I've never understood why only Star Wars pops get stands. I, I don't... You know, that that's a secret. It's buried with JFK and Hoffa somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's like, why? Anyways, so what? They had them. You could take them off. Here's, here's the kicker, dude. The bases have fucking pegs, and the, and the pops have holes. Yeah. So what is the point of the fucking... Super glue. Yeah, I don't understand that at all. I don't get it because I have I have a couple of pops. So when TFA came out, I like you know I went to go see it with my friends in in Texas, and um, it was around Christmas time because that's when all Star Wars movies should release. Disney fucked up on Solo. Bob. But um, so I like I was feeling generous, so I went out and I got everybody pops. For like, you know, I was with like four or five people. So I bought like five, six pops. This guy's so making like, mills. I was like, here you go. Everybody gets a Funko Pop. Here's your birthday present or your Christmas present. Um, and I kept the Phasma. And that's what I noticed. Too. Like I was on the stand. I was like, okay, this is cool. But then like one day I was fucking around with it or something like that. And it came and like it came off the stand. I was like, oh, it's like pegs in the, like it just pegs to right. the thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah so what's no, the now, fucking now they decide glue? to fucking hot super glue them as they're going into their boxes. I mean, it, it gets the, the bases get all messy. It's, they don't even fucking try to line up. Anyways, we get, you got some new pops to look at. And if you check it out on starwarstime.net, we got the pre-order links for you. Nick will have those in the cast post. Yeah. Uh, so you, you can pick these up if you're still Matt, into I it. got one question for you. Does this, 10 inch supersized pop of kylo light up yes oh yeah, yeah the dark the, the gray one with the back the gray background yeah yeah totally i might have to get that like that's just too fucking cool i this mean i got sad. i got i got the one of the new it's an exclusive kylo from tross and the trixie knight or from tross so, like that's his code name it's the one he kind of looks like the grim reaper or ghost from overwatch okay uh I'm sure you can Reaper. see him in the gallery there. I mean, he's got the axe. He's holding the axe, that guy. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, I see him. So anyways, they, 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 they came in the last Smuggler's Bounty, which, as I said, you can check on YouTube, my friends. But I'm looking, I was like, these are just, they're, they're so well sculpted now. And, and the Kylo's one of them, but he's got his hood up. And it, they are, they look great. So I, that, that light up one probably would be a nice little piece for you, Nick, especially moving into the new house. Yeah. I, I think you need to get it. Yeah, yeah. Once I once I have a proper man cave established and I can start, you know, putting things in it and not having to worry about, you know, oh, this is the guest room or, you know, this is a, you know, a shared room. I'll I'll start to have some pieces here and there that I can, you know, scatter about my my man cave. Damn but yeah, I mean, these cool these things, they all look pretty cool. These mystery miners are really nice, really fun little additions. I like the way that they make them look, the face sculpts and stuff like that, and then obviously these new pops all look pretty sick. Finally getting some Knights of Ren merch on your shelf will be a plus. Still just individual Knight of Ren. So yeah, there's no, no, names. no names yet. <laughs> but anyways, we're, we got more toys, and these are kind of the toys that I'm into now. And we got some new Star Wars Black Series reveals from Hasbro. I forget 
which con was going on as one of the European cons, but we got some new Jedi's coming and a Dooku and basically a lot of prequel stuff. Which yeah, is fine. Yeah. I mean, I'm all about collecting the figures. I don't have to like the movies. But, Nick, they revealed a Plo Koon with robe, yep. a Kit Fisto with no robe, <laughs> a Count Dooku with motion effect blade attachment for his lightsaber, and then one of the uh, Geonosian battle droids. And in addition to that, we also... Uh, Nick and I talked about this other figure, uh, I think, a few months back. Yeah. It was the Summer Convention exclusive Luke. It was the one with Luke and his Yavin celebration outfit that also came with the blast shield helmet, the training remote, and a blaster bolt. Well, buddy, we can now pre-order him here in the U.S. for 35 bucks from Entertainment Earth. So, if people, if you've been looking for this version of this Yavin Luke, hit up the posts we got. Nick will have links for you and get him for 35 bucks, which is a pretty good deal for a convention exclusive. So anyways, we, we know about the Luke. What, what are you thinking about these new Jedi guys? Okay, so I think that they picked a good two to start off with. How yeah, think, they did. You know, Plo Koon and, and Kit Fisto are two of the most unique-looking Jedi that we see in the prequel era. I mean, you have my one of my favorite alien races that we went through. I think it was uh, in our Q&A session, somebody asked, like, what are your favorite alien races from Star Wars? And mine was Nautilin, and that's what fucking Kit Fisto is. And then Plo Koon's always been a badass-looking motherfucker just because he's had, like... He has the respirator. He's got, you know, these claw hands. Like, he I mean, just what, what's looks... on his eyes? By the, I don't know how much you know about this dude, but it, I mean, does his race require these uh, apparatuses to almost be grafted into their skin? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know too much about the Keldor, but like, I don't know if he was just like badly injured in battle right, and like right. has to have these to basically like he's you know, kind of part robot, just like... That's what I mean, because even his eyes look mechanical. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's so hard, because we get to see a lot of uh, Plo Koon in particular in the Clone Wars television yeah, straight. series. Yeah, because him and, him and uh, Ahsoka have a little bit of a side bond. Yeah, they do. And he's he's also kind of, you know, he's the best Jedi pilot, so he gets featured in that type of stuff, although he does get smoked. Yeah. flying by flying. order 66 i mean he should have sensed that but hey it's either here nor there no I, i'm with you man i mean the the details the sculpt for these two jedis are so intricate that yes they make fantastic figures and they should probably even uh, they'll make even better uh, photo subjects for sure okay so here we go for those wondering why plo Koon wears a mask keldor have to wear a mask because oxygen is poisonous to them um, so they, they have to wear this respirator and they have to cover their eyes because oxygen is, is a poisonous gas to them. Oh, okay. So it, it now I, I, I might've missed it, but it, it, it is a mask or is it built into them? No, it's a, it's a mask. So if he was back on his home planet of Cato Nemodia, then he would be able to take it off. Um, or that's where Plo Koon's from. I mean, I think that, yeah, so I'm looking at it now. Native to the planet of Doran. Um, but but uh, Plo Koon himself was from Cato Nemodia. Um, so, yeah, if they were on Doran, they wouldn't need to wear it. Got you. Oh, maybe so it's the figure and I'd have to look. But, the, I mean, the figure literally makes it look like this mask is surgically but, grafted to his face. Yeah, and it kind of, like, even in the, like, in the, you know, the live action version, you can't really tell that that's just like something he can take off. It does look like it's just fucking straight attached to his face. Like it is grafted in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's interesting stuff from, from, uh, you know, oh yeah, dude. I mean, look at that. I'm pulling up like some, some shit from Wikipedia. That motherfucker's got that shit stitched into his skin. Yeah. I, f- I guess he figured like, well, I'm a Jedi, and not only am I a Jedi, I'm a general in the Army of the Grand Republic, so I might as well just get this shit permanently uh, did attached. You see, did you see the... I, I just did a search for Plo Koon and went to images. Did you see the animated one where it's kind of depicting what he would look like without it? Ooh, no. Let me see. I know this, this is a radio show, people, but... Um, uh, I, oh, 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 that is a very... <laughs> I mean, he's got like a, a vagina face. I mean, you know, it yeah. kind of has that predator look, but not as menacing. 
Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's a similar style. I mean, I'll I'll try to remember to 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 put this image in the post, but um, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, I'll, they're freaky looking. Uh, keep keep your mask on, Plo. You look much much better. Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, I mean, these two figures, like we were mentioning, Plo Koon is a huge figure in the in the you know Clone Wars television series. Uh, Kit Fisto is it's just one of the more recognizable alien Jedi's that you have right. from the from the time of the the Grand Republic, and then what I really like about this Dooku is you mentioned it you know when you were describing it the the motion blade I've never seen this before on a figure but I'm sure that you have I'm sure it's not that um, uncommon I've only seen it in accessories for one six scale like the Barbie guys the the two hundred dollar plus ones I mean I, I have. Uh, everyone I've come with, or everyone I bought, at least Jedi's and excuse me, Sith comes with one of these for sure. I just I never slap one on because I'm like, eh, fuck it, off to do post processing, and that's going to be harder than just drawing a line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but this that shit looks. No, he looks really good. I mean, cool. honestly, these again look right up there with sh figure arts quality in particular plo coon with the details in his face so hopefully that comes through in the final product what, what dumbfounds me to this day with hasbro though is how they decide which jedi get robes and which ones don't because it I don't makes know, no because, fucking sense because I, mean? I know kit fisto wore a robe like kit well, he fisto definitely wore... doesn't in sith he doesn't yeah. in clones because you just see him doing like his slapstick blue screen yeah. fighting in the arena <laughs> It's yeah, I don't understand it. Like, why would why would fucking Plo Koon get one and then it, dude, it's, not it's, get one? It happens every wave. There's Jedi's that get robes. There's Jedi's that don't. It, it just it doesn't make any sense. Especially the prequel ones. Every prequel era Jedi should come with a fucking robe. Yeah, exactly. Like you see all of them. That's in what robes. they wore. I mean, literally every one of them were pimped out in their Jedi tunics and robes, and that, that's yeah. it. I guess it's just them wanting to skimp on the soft goods to the to the rest of the good people out there. I just don't understand. I it. guess, but I mean, even if we're talking costs, I, I look at Plo Koon and I go, I could see that almost costing more because of how detailed the the the, the mold had to be. But yeah. they throw they throw him a rope. Where you look at Kit and he's basically smooth surfaces with plastic tentacles. It's like, yeah. Okay. All right. I don't know. Maybe his two tendrils that hang down in front of him are considered accessory pieces. <laughs> maybe so. Maybe they're. Uh, it's, it's just odd. I mean, I'm, I'm bitching here, but and but then yeah. you know we got a we got a battle droid. We've had battle droids, but these are the Geonosian in particular. So yeah, the red Geonosian battle droids. All these are up for pre order now. Again, Nick will have the link in the post body, which you can always follow along while you're listening to an episode of the Star Wars Time Show. All right, man, moving on to some fandom, in particular some pretty radical fandom I stumbled upon this week. Uh, it's a, it's kind of a, what would you call it? It's, it's a fan film, maybe a fan trilogy, it seems like. It seems like yeah. there's plans to do more. But this YouTube channel known as Wilkins Animations, uh, they dropped this thing. It's called uh, Dark Empire. It's a, I describe it as a 70s style Star Wars animated fan short. Uh, so if you've watched old cartoons, even early 80s, or maybe you've watched the Star Wars holiday special and saw the little Boba, blue Boba Fett animation, that's the style we're talking about. So this guy, girl, group of people, whoever they are, they took it upon themselves to create a pretty masterful short that I believe, Nick, what is it, like 15 minutes long, yeah. something like that? Yeah, right at like 12, 13 minutes. And and it's, um, I mean, it's set post-Return of the Jedi. I would, I'd have to lean on Nick, but I feel like it's taken more of the tone that the Expanded Universe took, uh, the, the Legends EU at this point. Uh, but, it, I mean, it, first off, the production value is out of this world. I mean, you're going to fire this up and be like, Holy shit, someone fucking did this without a studio's backing. Yeah. Secondly, the voice acting is just as great as the production value, so that's another win. And thirdly, it's actually a pretty well done narrative that I want to continue watching. Yeah, dude, like I got to the end of this short and like I said, it's only about twelve minutes long, so give it a watch. And I was like, Holy shit, when when does part two come out? Like this shit is very in you know it sucks you in it like encapsulates you in star wars lore and then 
it really draws you in to want more. So, I mean, to, just to give like a quick overview of what's happening here in this, in this short, um, this is post ROTJ, like Matt said. Um, we are following at the beginning of this at the beginning of the show. We're following Han, Luke. I mean, not Han, Luke. Han, Leia, and Chewie as they go in search of Luke and Lando, who are stranded on an al- who are stranded on Coruscant in this world. Um, the remnants of the Empire have risen back up, and there is a civil war um, ensuing bet- within the. Uh, Imperial yeah, I, I mean, literally, versus, the, yeah. the Imperials are fighting each other. Yeah, like there's the, a... the the New Republic people are trying to basically kick all their asses. I mean, it's very interesting narrative. Yeah, so it's it's really fun. So you get to see, you know, Han and Leia and Chewie land on Coruscant and search for Luke, and then you know Lando, and there's a ton of fantastic storytelling elements here. Oh, like yeah. Matt said, the voice acting is on point. Like. I was expecting this Han voice to be like, ah, oh, this is shitty. Like, I'm probably not going to be good. When the guy started speaking, I was like, oh, wow, you can wow. hear a bit of Harrison Ford. Right. There. Well, how about the Lando one? Yeah, the Lando one. The was Lando like- guy, <laughs> I think, is Billy D. Yeah, I mean, he might have just been like, hey, guys, you know, I got, you know, I love fan projects. I'll give you guys, you know, a, a little bit of my time. Here's a few lines, uh, you know, use it to the best effect that you can. So, yeah, yeah the just, Billy D I mean, one was great. Again, this is all we're not going to sit here and break it down, the, the merits of the story or whatnot. But I have a feeling those of you that are card carrying members of the fandom menace, those of you that do not like Disney Star Wars, this this thing's for you. Yeah, okay? this is, I believe, probably what you all wanted to see in a new trilogy, even though it was specifically made that the new trilogy was going to be about new people. Uh, but a lot of people, I think, forgot that that bulletin when Disney also think bought they it. They forgot it, that fucking Mark Hamill is sixty five years old. Right. right. Like, but Mark anyways, and- I I know for a fact this Dark Empire short from Wilkins Animations would be right up the alleys of those of you that just aren't too pleased with the stories that the classic characters got in the new trilogy. So as we've been saying. StarWarsTime.net, we're going to have it on there. You can check it out. It'll be linked in the post-cast body or the post-shell body of this episode. Yeah. So moving right along, speaking of Mark Hamill, love the guy. I mean, he had a rough time with TLJ, but I think he's kind of figured all that out. and just he, He's just a fun guy. I mean, you got to follow him on Twitter. If you're a MAGA bro, don't follow him on Twitter because then you'll, <laughs> yeah. you'll just hate him. Uh, but he is just he's a fantastic follow even outside of the the political stuff he brings up but uh he is participating in one of these o maze fundraisers right now i mean daisy's doing one adam driver's doing one yep. and the gift is essentially if you win you get to donate money if you win uh for marks you get to go have dinner with the dude and then attend the red carpet premiere of the rise of skywalker i think like two or three days earlier maybe even a week early than everyone else in the states but we're not here pushing the charity yes go do it i, I try to pledge to an omay star wars charity at least once a year they've been doing it since tfa i haven't won any of the money prizes but mm-hmm. that's fine it still goes to a good cause but the way they're kind of pitching this one, the way they're generating interest for Mark's Omaze for Tross is fantastic, Nick, because they they kind of set him up with a captioned version of his first ever audition for Star Wars, and great. they make him watch it, and he kind of provides color commentary, and it's just priceless. Yeah, it's fantastic because, I mean, you have the, the original audition kind of playing in the top right corner while you're watching... Um, it, it's Mark like a trailer watching. reaction video. Yeah, Think of it yeah. that way. So what's fantastic about it is he's watching, like some people who watch videos of themselves in the past just kind of watch it and chuckle along. Mark is typical Mark where he's like, you know, you know, self-deprecating. Like, why are you talking like that? Why are you, why did I just say hands and not yeah, hands? hands? Like, hands. <laughs> you know, and he's that. like, you know, he'll pause the, the audition tape every so often and be like, yeah, you know, we hear the questions that we were asking, right. you know, uh, asking George, Lucas. George, how do you say, it? is it Han or Han? Is yeah. it Chewbacca or Chewbacca? <laughs> yeah. I mean, so and that, that's what makes this video great, Nick, right? It's the yeah. little anecdotes that he provides and you can see uh, the nostalgia flowing through Mark as he's watching this. Like, I really oh, yeah. feel like he's genuinely having a good time creating this commercial essentially for Omaze. 
and that he is enjoying doing the bit of watching himself in his first ever audition for the role that essentially made him uh, he's immortal. I mean, Mark Hamill will never die as long as humanity exists because of his Luke Skywalker. Exactly. Yeah. And it's fantastic to watch it because you get little anecdotes that, you know, maybe he said before in, in select interviews, but doesn't always bring up. So like in, in here, he's talking about, you know, this being the first time he met Harrison Ford and how this guy is like, he is, he is the prototypical leading man. Like everybody wants to be Harrison Ford. So when he's doing this, I mean, at least how Mark says it in this, you know, when he's doing this audition tape, he assumes that Han Solo is the main character of Star Wars. He's like, oh, well, I'm the sidekick and Han Solo is the leading man because Harrison Ford's already been a leading man before. Um, And then it wasn't until he got the script, the original script that was called, you know, the Legends of Star Wars um the from the diaries of of, of luke the saga the wills of saga, saga. Yeah, saga. it's all fucking yeah. cra- i mean trust me george had some crazy shit in his head and I, I believe he he went on record or maybe it was an old quote but he essentially said he was going to expand upon the concept of midichlorians in his seven eight nine i mean es- essentially again fucking all that shit up with the force and saying that uh, your your force depends on these little organisms but he was going to go with it's the wills who control the the force through midichlorians and they're the ones that tell the midichlorians what to do and this that and the other thing interesting and he's like everyone would have hated it but that's (laughs) where i was going it's like yeah "Yeah, george thanks for selling buddy it's like yeah well i think we've made the right choice then here but um yeah i mean this video is fantastic i mean if i wanted i know that daisy's doing one i know that adam's doing one but like as a you know a lifelong star wars fan and as somebody who's really this is the one you do nick yeah exactly this is the 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 pick because i mean i wouldn't even just go talk you know if i got to sit down and have a dinner with mark hamill one i think he would just be a fantastic person to interact with um, we've seen his personality and we've seen like he, he hits the con circuit and he's not one of those types of celebrities that's like, oh, you know, I don't have time for the fans or I don't want to really talk to you people. Let me just do my work and then forget about me. Like he interacts with people. He really appreciates the love that the fans show him. And then he also has so many other things that are within this, this fandom realm that we all live in this geekosphere that you could talk to him about. Like you could talk to him about his time as Joker, you know, voicing the Joker. You could talk to him about, you know, being on the flash television series when he was playing trickster. You could talk to him about even fucking when he played cock knocker and and Kevin Smith's, you know, uh, Jay and Silent Bob strike back. Like the guy has such a body of work and is so magnanimous. Like he loves to talk to people that I feel like, you would go there and of course you would talk about star Wars because that's what you are a fan of. But like the conversations that you can have with Mark how awkward do you think that. this dinner is though? I mean, how, how many people you think are standing around handlers, maybe even camera crews? Uh, yeah. I mean, I gotta imagine that there is, hmm, I, I mean, I want, I guess it depends on like the location in which they do it. Like if they do like, you know, if you're actually going out to a restaurant, then yeah, it would be chaos. But if they did it like, okay, you know, we're going to set you guys up at a, you know, a, shut down the restaurant. It's just going to be you two guys. Oh, yeah, that'd we're gonna, be like, fucking fantastic. I don't care yeah. how many people are watching. I would just, as you were implying, I would just like to sit there and, and shoot the shit. I, I wouldn't even try to fan out on the guy. I would just talk to him like a human as Mark Hamill and not talk to him like he's Luke Skywalker. Yeah, I mean, I I think think... he would enjoy because I'm sure that's most interactions he get are are people coming up to him and treating him like he's Luke or the Joker. Yeah, exactly. Like there's you don't really get any other interactions when you're like on the con circuit and people are waiting in line and paying for an autograph from you and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's it's I would like to do it. I feel like the reason that they probably don't like film these interactions or film these like dinners is because they probably are super fucking awkward. Like some of these people who win them are probably just like, you know, incapable of speech. Once they sit down with them, they're just like, so, you know, star crazed when they sit next to, you know, or they're they just a socially awkward 
geek nerd. I mean, it, it's, yeah, it's not I mean, easy it's... to be our type of geek nerd where you can actually, I don't want to say hide it because I'm not embarrassed of being a geek or a nerd, but I just, I don't know. I, I, no one's ever been able to out me as a Star Wars freak unless I tell them is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I don't typically think you would come across me and see me and be like, this guy probably spends a lot of time in a basement talking about <laughs> fantasy sci-fi type of stuff with other dudes. Yeah, I mean we're we're, you know, one of those people within hardcore fandom that has adjusted well to the outside world. And like yeah, there's just, there you go. That that's a I guess and that's I'm a like, diplomatic way of saying it. Yeah. I mean, you could just say some of you guys are just fucking weirdos. Yeah, and like I'm not trying to shit on anybody because I know how hard it can be to have social anxiety and like a lot of these disorders where, you know, social interaction is difficult. Like I know what it's like to have that. Um, but we're I'll tell you what, I did enough. too. <laughs> and I now teach in front of people and give speeches in front of people. And I'll tell you what helped me. It's probably not going to make sense, but it really helped. I mean, I was such a puss in elementary and high school, never wanted to stand up and talk, never wanted to raise my hand. And it wasn't like I was stupid. I mean, I was somewhat intelligent. I just never wanted to have the spotlight on me, which is weird now because that's all I want is the spotlight. (laughs) But what changed it for me, Nick, was joining corporate America and being placed on a staff of managers at 23 years old so there's me, 23. I'm on there with the GM, the production manager, the quality manager. They're all in their, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s. And I'm sitting there and I have to, you know, report on my part of the business to them, interact with them, interact with their teams. And that just kicked all of the shyness and anxiety out of me when it came to speaking my mind in front of other people and just having dialogue. And it sucked. It sucked, but I knew, I, I knew it. It's like if I sit here in these meetings with these old dudes and I'm a little pussy and I don't speak up when I need to or I don't try to give opinions, I'm going to get walked over. So that, that's yeah. what did it for me. And now, I mean, again, I'm a fucking gas bag. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I, I think I'm blowing my vocal cords out because you and I podcast for up to three hours a week. Yeah. I lecture. I do videos for – uh, my academic job where I have to do voiceovers. I'm doing visio- videos for Star Wars time with voiceovers. I just, I can't shut up now. <laughs> yeah. You just, you, you took all those years of like repression and not talking. It, it, exactly. And then you're getting them all out now, you know, and, and, and I regret it took me too long. I mean, I, I'll, I'll say this till I, I, it took me way too long to figure out what I wanted to do in life. I mean, it wasn't until I was 30 and I, yeah. you know, I missed a lot of shit. I could probably be a famous YouTuber now if I jumped on in 2005 when it was brand new and no one knew what the fuck to do with it. True. But hey, shoulda, woulda, coulda. All right, man, let's move on to our next one. We'll, we'll have details for Mark's O'Maze fundraiser if you want to get with it in the post shell of this episode. All right, man, moving on to some Tross stuff. In particular, our homeboy, Snap Wexley, one of the greatest pilots in the resistance, or so he says. <laughs> uh, so anyways, we all know who plays Snap. It's Greggy, Greg Grunberg. This is J.J. Abrams' lifelong buddy. J.J. Uh, is essentially the reason this guy has an acting gig. And you know what? I'm not hating on Greg. Good for him. I wish one of my loser friends became essentially Steven Spielberg Part 2. Yeah. That, you know, that's not what we're here to talk about, though. This guy, for I'd say, what, Nick, the past week or so, yeah. has been throwing up signal flares on his Twitter in all caps, very Trumpian, basically saying, <laughs> big Star Wars news coming very, very soon. I and mean, we just got one today where he changed it to, my big Star Wars news coming very, very soon. I'm, I can't. I can't help it. When stuff's in caps, I have you to. You just got to read it like that. But yeah, so, I mean. What, what do you think this guy's teasing? I mean, is, is it anything big <sighs> with him saying my big news? I mean, it's probably snap related. My guess, I'll kind of throw it out there, see where you're going with it was uh, maybe he's going to announce like a new toy, a new snap toy. Yeah. So when I first saw it, if he, like, like Matt said, if you kind of follow his, his Twitter trail back a little bit, like it really, you know, big news coming soon, October 31st, big you know, the first picture is literally of toys. It's of the Legos. You can see the the Lego snap. And then there's a Funko pop snap that's right next to him. 
Scroll up to November 2. Now the tone changes a little bit. He just said, at first he just said, big news coming with the toys. Now he says, all caps, big Star Wars news, hashtag Star Wars, so you get the cross lightsabers in there. News coming soon. <laughs> and then he puts in the poster, <laughs> like he's got the Tross, the actual You know what poster. I see? This is what I en- envision what's going on every time he sends a tweet. Someone from Disney or Lucasfilm's like, God damn it, Greg. The yeah, fuck like, are you doing? We told you you can't talk about it until so and so date. Yeah. Just stop this shit. And then he's like, oh, yeah, well, I got to wait for a permission. But yeah. big news is coming. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, so November 3rd, same thing. I'm just waiting for the official okay to announce the news. And then fucking uh, t- today, today, earlier today, my this is when he says my, my big Star Wars news coming very, very soon. And again, it's got the poster on it. But, yeah, I mean, after seeing the initial – tweet on october 31st showing the toys and then the way that this is kind of oh wait never mind it's up here his big news has been revealed (laughs) all right look at at the pin tweet three hours ago (coughs) snap wexley is gonna be Uh, what a fucking joke he just fucking trolled our asses i hate myself for even posting it and i knew it was gonna be something stupid it's another so for those of you listening Greg Grunberg is now a part of the O-Maze, um, the fundraiser. So basically, um, you know, you donate to the O-Maze charity. You could win a trip to join him on the, the Tross premiere. Yeah, it's, it's the same shit we are just talking about, Perfect, except yeah. he didn't get to do something creative like Mark to reveal it. He just did something stupid. Yeah, yeah. I don't blame him. I mean, what, what else does he have to do? I'm sure he was having fun generating some new followers, getting some headlines from Star Wars sites like ours. But yeah. So what here's a shithead. All right. Here's the, the deal, though. You get to meet up with Snap, Greg, be his wingman on the carpet. Um, you get an autographed JJ poster, um, be among the first to see it, and you get flown out to LA and put up in a four star hotel. So you get your travel paid for, you get your lodging paid for. Yeah, you get I mean, his, his is very much like Daisy's and Adam's then. Yeah, so, um, and then if you're wondering what it goes towards, this will go towards, um, you know, epilepsy, epilepsy curing, curing epilepsy. Yeah, if, and, and don't t- get me wrong, people. I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know, good for Greg for raising money for a good cause. But He it's did like, what, really what, bait us on that shit. What though. a fucking dickhead. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be something stupid, but not like just a fucking another O maze. What an ass! Yeah. So hey, good for him, to... man. He knows how to he knows how to generate some hype, right? Oh, he that does. Snap Wexley is one hell of a PR guy, if anything. Yeah, one point three million followers from Mr. Yeah, it's Wexley. not bad, man. Like I said, so he's, it, he's if only there. we all could have a JJ that we grew up next to. Yeah. So. Uh, that's Greg Grunberg's big news. Well, so I'm, cl- I'm glad we got to break it live, and I don't have to do a follow-up post to reveal it because that, <laughs> that would just made me feel like shit. But hey, yeah, it's like oh, it's go, another that, motherfucking obese. <laughs> we got Nick here on the live Twitter clicking. All we right, man. So mo- moving on to some good stuff here. Um, I guess saying out of nowhere is kind of ridiculous considering the show's a week away, but it, it did kind of cu- catch me off guard just like last week's reveal that we were getting new Mando promo materials. Well, that happened again this Monday, and we got a pretty big one in the official reveal of Ming-Na Wen's character, who she's playing in the Mando. So, you know, Nick and I, I think we dedicated at least two casts to this. I did some videos speculating this, that, and the other thing. Would they be bringing some Filoni animated characters? Would she be Sabine, Ahsoka, Mara Jade? Well, she's not any of them. She (laughs) is playing a brand new character, at least the way she's being explained, and her name is Fennec Shand. Yeah. Fennec is literally a type of fox, and that's literally where the name came from. Yep. And she is playing, her character is a stealth assassin. And I yeah, guess she's a merc. Know. She's yeah. essentially, I'm assuming during, you know, pre Mando timeline, they made it sound like she built up her rep by being one of the best assassins for the top level crime syndicate. So, you know, yeah. the Crimson Dons, those type of people. Yeah. These, this is, you know, still happening during the age of the, you know, the age of the Republic or no, the age of the 
Oh my God, I can't remember. <laughs> it's Age of the Republic, Age of the Rebellion. So she was in the Age of the Rebellion. Right. She, as she a, was she was making her name. I'm I'm saying probably towards the tail end of Republic, more so Rebellion. Yeah. Yes. You know. So kind of working with the crime syndicates because even. You know, you would imagine that crime syndicates during the eight, you know, the reign of the empire probably had a little bit more free reign. That's not how it was. Like the empire was very cutthroat against these crime syndicates because all the shit that they were running, the empire wanted to run. Like the empire didn't want to have anybody that had a, you know, a hold of something within the galaxy that was out of their grasp. Yeah, you would know more than me on, on that type of stuff, but I think one thing we could say, they definitely didn't fuck with the huts. I don't yeah, know if that's because... Yeah, they stayed out of the outer rim. Yeah, yeah that, I guess that was the point I was going to make. I, I, I think the, the Empire, they, they didn't really give two shits about what was happening in the outer rim, and it's because most of the outer rim planets didn't have resources they needed. It's not like they wanted Tatooine. Yeah, exactly. Like, the only thing that was on Tatooine was Sand, the Chosen One, and then fucking <laughs> the Huts. So, you know, I'm sure if they would have known that Luke Skywalker was sitting out there right for the picking, they would have been there earlier, but nobody knew that. So they just had to, you know, they kept to their core worlds and their, um, you know, their inner, you know, right. inner rim worlds and not really fucked around too much with the outer rim. But anyway, Fennec Shand, Fennec Shand, I don't know how you say it. Um, I like Sean sounds good, but I'm I'm kind of East Coast, so I'm always going to get that. Yeah. Get the long A, get yeah. the hard yeah. A. But um, it's really cool because, so like they, you know, we had a little bit of an interview, I guess you could call it, quote unquote, interview with, um, with Ming-Na Wen after, you know, once, once her character has been revealed and she kind of compared her to a Han Solo, but I like the way that you put it in the post is she's a little bit more of a sinister version of Han Solo um, yeah, I mean, she was hired you know. to murder people, where he was hired to to steal shit. Yeah, I mean, she's more a little, akin, little different. <laughs> yeah, she's more akin to a bounty hunter than an actual smuggler because. I, yeah, I mean, I yeah, guess, I mean, they're calling her a mercenary essentially. Yeah. I mean, mercenaries will do whatever the fuck. So I, I would say, you know, her LinkedIn, her her top <laughs> profile is probably an assassin. Yeah. But she's, uh, a, but she's a mercenary type, so she'll yeah. kill anybody, good guys or bad guys. Yeah, so what's going to be really interesting about her character is that um, we clearly know that she's going to be interacting with the Mando. Um, we don't know if that's going to be uh, a relationship that starts off as, like, you know, as you put it in the post. Like, is she hunting down the Mando? Does she work for Werner Herzog's character, Moff Gideon? Or... Is it possible that these two now in this fucking lawless galaxy, because in the new trailer, that's the one of the big lines, a lawless galaxy, are these two sort of interacting together in a way? Are they crossing paths along, you know, a mutual bounty? I, I mean, that, that's the fun stuff to speculate on, right? I mean, I'm still... I'm going to go with she's probably hired to hunt him down, because yeah. I, I don't know. But I do have a feeling especially once we get to the, the trailer that featured her with dialogue i do have a feeling that because she is she kind of walks both lines and you know she's like a dj whoever's paying me fine i'm on their team i could see her eventually go in the way of of cara dune and maybe kind of buddying up with them yeah yeah i mean i especially this being ming not when i mean i know she's not a huge name to people who aren't familiar with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but, like, she's a, a known actress. She's a fantastic actress, and she seems like she's playing a badass character. I don't oh, think yeah. that she, she would be, she's like... a in, martial artist. Like, we're going to see her tussle. There's no doubt about it. They, they didn't hire Ming-Na just to slap on a, a cool-looking black ninja outfit. I mean, she's going to be getting into some fisticuffs, I think. Yeah, and I don't think that she's going to have one of these short arcs like we, you know, we can sometimes see in a television series. I, I really do think that once she comes in, she'll be kind of a, a more prominent figure and she'll be around for a long time. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm really interested to see where this goes. And this is kind of like, you know, this all came from the TV spot, the new TV spot that kind of dropped out of nowhere, like you mentioned, Matt, that really does focus on you know, Kuil, Nick Nolte's character of the, you know, the Ugnot, 
and then also introduces Fennec Shand as this, you know, stealth assassin, this mercenary that is either going to be, you know, hunting down the Mandalorian or trying to team up with the Mandalorian. A certain yeah, it actually, I forget where I read it, but I, I don't think we're going to get Fennec until about halfway in. It, it okay. sounds like she's going to be in Filoni's second episode because he, gotcha. he did the pilot. And, you know, we, we had the list on StarWarsTime.net somewhere, but who's yeah. directing what. But I think he comes back for, like, five. number five or six. Yeah, he comes back for five. So, yeah, maybe maybe they bring her in, introduce her kind of late in the season, and she becomes recurring and maybe has a bigger role in season two. Because we, we know season two is live. They're actually shooting it now. Yeah. Uh, so this is not a self-contained season. So that they're probably going to want to dangle some plot threads like any show, we're, we're going to have the over-encompassing plot thread, which is probably going to be who the fuck is the Mandalorian, right? Yeah. I honestly think that that's going to be the big thing maybe for this whole series. Who is this guy? I mean, I, I'm I'm guessing now we, we may not get any insights, any looks at him during season one, although it looks like that lady's going to lift his helmet. We still may not know who he truly is, though. I don't know. But you know what I'm saying. And then, you know, every episode may have a self-contained plot. But there's usually episode plots, and then you have these series overarching deals. And it looks like Fennec is probably going to get mixed up in one of the overarchings. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Um, so if you want to move on to this plot, this, you know, this, well, not really plot breakdown, but this, you know, TV yeah, spot Yeah, so we, we got a new, a new TV know. spot. It was just, it was 30 seconds long. But for a TV spot, I, I tr- typically don't post them because a lot of times it's retread with maybe one new little oh, wow, look at that. This was almost all brand new footage. I mean, I I got 18 stills out of it, so that's what I consider new. And and we're not going to do our our full-on, you know, blah, 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 scene by scene, because you didn't really get much to talk on, but we we did get a few things we want to mention. And the first is, hey, we get to hear Kuil talk for the first time. And my God, dude, I mean, obviously it sounds like Nolte, but they (laughs) even made the face look like Nolte on this Ugnot guy. And he looks so good. It does. I mean, we. Now, I never think that's really... an animatronic. Like that's yeah, not CG. Yeah, that is an animatronic. Because I remember when when this whole filming was going on, we you know did a story right. Like he was on... sitting in a closet, essentially wearing <laughs> a device, and it was mimicking him on set or whatever. Yeah. So this face that you see, there's to, at least to my knowledge. Like, this is all animatronic. So everything that you see, yeah. the motion of the face is all... And, like, yeah, they modeled that fucking face after his face. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, is- <laughs> if, if Nick Nolte fucked an Ugnot, that's exactly what it would look like. Yeah. and 100%. So we, we get to hear him, and he actually says a pretty insightful line that, that answers some things Nick and I were speculating on in the last cast where we broke down the Full Mando trailer. Uh, but one of the first lines we get in this little TV spot, Nick, is he says... I've never met a Mandalorian. Yeah, I know. Right? That is completely counter to what we've been saying. Right. We're, we're like, oh, we're yeah, they know each other, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I was, I was putting it as like these, they were like lifelong buddies or they had at least worked together before and maybe he was helping them out. But the way this goes down, I mean, clearly Kawil is just meeting this guy. So it seems now, Nick, that he may be hiring him for a job, and I still think the job is hunting this this horned beast we've now seen twice. Yeah, so the horned beast definitely comes back into play towards the back end of the 30 seconds here. But yeah, I mean, now that we have this line from Kuil, it could be that like they have never met before. And in the first episode, one of the first bounties that we see the Mandalorian pick up is from Kuil, and then... Right. They just kind of stay acquaintances throughout the rest of the series. Yeah, I mean, it, we've also heard that Nolte wasn't a main fixture either. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think he worked. I mean, he might have done like a day's worth of work. So I, I'm anticipating maybe that exchange is right there in the pilot, and that's going to be our soft intro to the Mando. Like, all right, he gets hired for tasks. People know about the Mandalorian legends. I mean, Kuil finishes it with, I've only read the stories, and then we get a bunch of you know, quick beats of Mando kicking everyone's ass. Um, So, I mean, I like that in universe, the the lore, uh, the mystique of Mandalorians is is out there and it exists. That's, that was kind of cool to get, but yeah, I mean, I I think that Kuil's probably going to be an episode one type of dude and they're going to do some sort of rinky dink mission before the Mando takes on the one that gets him mixed up in some shit. 
Yeah, you know, I, I, I would like to see him use this kind of, you know, a, a plot device to get the Mandalorian somewhere else. I hope it's not just like, thanks for the mission, see you later. Maybe it's like, hey, I got a job. <laughs> like, he's looking for something, you know, like the Mandalorian's looking for something to do. This guy gives him a job, but then after it's done, he's like, you know what? You're you're pretty good. Why don't you go see my man, Grief yeah, Karga? Yeah, that, 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 that's exactly what I'm kind of speculating here. That We're going to be introduced to the man, though, as just kind of not bumbling around, but looking for work. I mean, it, it, it was made clear over at Star Wars Celebration when Nick and I watched some of the shit that they never released that even the bounty hunters are suffering in this in this time period because i mean you, you've got these people like moff gideon they're taking over they're getting into the shadier shit they may be taking bounties assassins smuggling jobs so it seems like people like the mandalorian are are struggling just to get by at this point in time so I, that's what i'm saying he, he'll take any fucking job even if it's hunting down a reek like beast in a shitty mud pit yeah. or an ugnot <laughs> Yeah, I mean anything to pay the bills. Yeah, so and, I, I think yeah. you're you're that's I'm I'm with you there. This is a this is a force bond, a Star Wars time force bond taking place. Yeah. I can see Nick, <laughs> and he's not wearing any pants. He's right. His his legs are oiled up like Kylo Ren's torso was. I mean that's what I do when I get home from work. My yeah, he, he <laughs> rips his pants off, puts on some baby oil, and then sits in his office chair. Yeah, and gets ready for the cast. And, I mean. I mean so for the rest of this, this, you know, this trailer, they're really, you know, like you mentioned, Matt, we get some new footage. But yeah, I really mean, we get to see him thing. on a do-back, which is, yeah. is cool. I mean, we only seen him on the Blurgs. We got to see some biker scouts for the first time, literally yeah. riding the same bikes from Return of the Jedi. From Return of the Jedi, same, same uniforms and everything. We got to see a nice, cool hyperspace jump in the Razor Crest. Here's what I want to ask you. When, when they kind of get into that gearing up montage, like, you know, I'm a bad, he's, he's putting on his fucking gauntlets and shit. That thing he tucks in his boot, when you first saw it, I don't know if you paid attention to it, but it, when I first saw it, it's like, oh man, that could be the Darksaber hilt. I didn't even think of that. Oh man, that's a good call though. That's a good call. And I, even in my breakdown, I, I mean, obviously the hilt does not look like what he's putting in his boot because the hilt has an actual, what the fuck do you call those things? An emitter? no fuck i don't know you know you got the hilt the thing you hold on to and then oh, the, you know kylo ren has the prongs coming out of his where traditional swords oh, the would cross have had. guard cross yeah guard. the cross guard there you go yeah yeah the thing you know the thing yeah the thing when i say the, the thing, thing right you there. should know what i'm talking about <laughs> the cross but yeah I, I didn't see that but it, it just seemed knowing how my boba fett figures gear up in terms of how you put his knives and shit in Typically, he's throwing his knives right on his boot for easy access. He's not jamming them into a boot like Mando is doing here. So, I know I'm taking a stretch. That's what fans do. That's what speculation is. But, I don't know. Darksaber. I'm throwing it out there. Mandalore, Mando, it all ties together. Yeah, live-action Darksaber would be nice. I'd like to see that. But, as you were saying, really, the, the, the next big deal here is when we get to see Fennec Shand... In the flesh, acting in, I'm speculating here, talking to the Mando, and she says, your name will be legendary. And that's a pretty fucking huge statement if she is talking to the Mando, dude. What does that mean? Yeah, I mean, there's, in my opinion, there's nobody else that we know of in this television series that, that would have that line spoken to them. Like, unless she's just some sort of, like, sycophantic follower of fucking Moff Gideon, and she's like... You're going to revive the Empire, and your name will be legendary. Yeah, I mean, we don't technically know who she's talking to. We're just yeah. guessing. But, I but mean, like, it, it has to be the Mando, in my opinion, too. Yeah, like, So, do you think she's saying that in terms of your real name will be legendary? As in, hey, Star Wars fans, you will know who this is once we reveal his real name, and you're all gonna, your draws are going to hit the fucking floor? Or is it... The Mandalorian name will be legendary. I like to pretty think... pretty much as we call him now. I mean, we only know him as the Mando. Is that yeah, what she's that's... saying, or is she saying your real name, aka Boba Fett, is going to be legendary? I I like to think that in s somehow some interaction between these two, like she finds out who she who he is, and she knows, and she says something like, 
if you let them know who you are, your name will be legendary. Like, is he, you know, the 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 heir to the Mandalorian throne? Is is right. he the next Mandalore? Um, I like to think of it that way because, like, if it's just like your name, Mandalorian, will be legendary. I mean, the Mandalorian name is already legendary. Like, Kuil mentioned that in in the fucking beginning. He's like, I've only heard the stories. People know. The legendary tales well, of the I mean, Mandalorian. Well, I mean, we even got that last week with Werner's character. I mean, really, the whole long draw narration essentially is: people have told me the Mandalorian is the best. Is that, is that true? Essentially. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, you're I, right. I mean, that is already legendary. So it probably is his real name, but what does that mean then? Is it legendary within the sense of the series, The Mandalorian, and those people in that time period? Or is it legendary as in Star Wars fans in the real world will go, oh, fuck. Yeah, I mean, I kind of hope it's the latter. You know, I as much as people want to bullshit and say like, oh, this is all fan. I mean, like there really hasn't been a lot of fan service, in my opinion, from the Mando. Like, yeah, you have a Mandalorian main character and everybody Dude, loves that's Boba all, Fett. I mean, you got to understand Fett, what these like, people are all about. All they want are the original films remade over and over. And even that, they just want props from it. Yeah. I mean, I think we got one of the comments was, oh, fuck yeah, Mando knows what they're doing. They got biker scouts. <laughs> they literally just want to watch the original trilogy over and over and over. Yeah. And that's great. I fucking love those movies attached to the nostalgia, but, but yeah, let's, let's move on a little bit. Let's leave that type of shit in the background and Easter eggs and cool little, you know, passerby conversations. We don't yeah. star Wars isn't defined by the original trilogy or it shouldn't be in my yeah. opinion. Do you think that Fennec Shand is Mandalorian? Like, do you think that, the the reason that she possibly knows who he yeah, is is because I mean, that's, she that's, is Mandalorian. Yeah, I mean that that could be one way to take it. I mean, honestly, if you really want to get loosey goosey, Fennec Shan shares a similar backstory to Mara Jade. She does. Right? She very was much a Mara and a, a Sith assassin. Essentially, she was the imp- she was called the Emperor's right hand. Like she was the Emperor's chief assassin. Yeah, right. So, I mean. This character to me is almost loosely based on her at this point. Yeah. I mean she's yeah. not she she's not working for the Empire. She probably did. I mean she's a merc for Christ's sake. But she's an assassin. She's stealthy. She's super skilled. Hot. She's super hot. Yeah, yeah I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't think she's gonna turn into Mara Jade, but I, no. I do see hints of that character in Shand here, you know, minus the, you're going to marry Luke and bang him and have some little Jedi babies. Yeah. I, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, she's coming from a similar background. She has a similar skill set, And I mean, we never really got to see Mara Jade in like, you know, in a lawless kind of environment. Like we see Fennec Shand in like, when we got to see Mara Jade, it was specifically sent on on missions to first kill Luke Skywalker, and then after that, they fall in he love. He used his force dick on her, and she's yeah. like, I love you. And that was it. And then you got Jedi Master Mara Jade. And I wonder then, if he you could know, like wave his wiener like their fingers and, and do like a Jedi mind trick. I think he could. I think you can. I think that's a part <laughs> you see, of the like You see Luke in bed, like his four plays, just he's like, winging his wiener around there's stuff like flying around the bedroom and stuff <laughs> dude i've never given any thought to like what what sex would be like with the yeah force, well, you're but, not uh, you're not <laughs> insane i am like i'm literally i'm almost 40 and i still revel in toilet humor and immaturity so yeah so i, I, mean, I literally yeah, went yeah. right to envisioning what luke's penis <laughs> could do with the force i mean i'm sure i mean as high as his midichlorian count is, I'm be- I bet you it could do some stuff. Yeah. I bet you it could, it, it could, it could be. That's probably. As I mean, powerful. his his semen has the force. That's oh yeah, how action packed that is with midichlorians. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, like they don't even need to try. Yeah, if you, if you leave guided. it alone for a while, it'll actually self realize and come to life and just yeah. be a force ball of jizz. Yeah, it doesn't because even of midichlorians. Need... Now remember the force is dictated by little parasites. What you guys don't know is that we're reading this from George's scripts for 7, 8, and 9. This is oh, what... Man, why'd the, you tell me? <laughs> we have the leaked versions of the yeah, script. The, this the, is the sex it. scene, the, the force sex scene. We yeah. have that. 
All right, so I, I guess the only other thing on Fennec, dude, if she is talking to Mando in the trailer, doesn't she seem a little too buddy-buddy the way she's talking to her potential target? That's what I was kind of, you know, that's why I referred to possibly this being to either Moff Gideon or Werner Herzog or something like that, because she does seem, like, fangirly. Like, she seems, that's why, I said, like, she seems sycophantic. Like, she's looking at somebody that she's yeah. revered forever. Yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't appear to be talking to someone she was just sent to murder. Yeah, no, unless, like... Unless these two, like, unless that is the case, and these two get into a fucking fisticuffs, and, you know, this girl being the best assassin that's ever lived, or, you know, one of the best assassins in the galaxy gets defeated, and then, you know, she's like, holy shit, like, if you let people know who you are, your name will be legendary. Like, you, if you could beat me, then... The, the galaxy is your fucking oyster. Well, or isn't something she like narcissistic? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean... Yeah, no, it, it was an interesting uh, exchange for sure. Uh, I'm glad we finally know who Ming-Na is. I'm bummed out it didn't turn out to be one of our guesses because then we could sit there and puff our chest out and tell everybody how fucking awesome we are. I mean, we do that now, but if that we happened, could... we, we'd actually have some juice behind it. Yeah, I was going to say, put saying, some substance behind that. Yeah, we'd, we'd actually have some... <laughs> juice like yeah I mean, these guys do know their shit but in the end that's the fun of speculating my friends but you also have to be able to separate yourself from you as a fan speculating and writing stories as to what the professionals create because in the end you're going to get probably pretty great stories but don't sit there and be like oh well they didn't do this or i thought they should have done that i think well great if you think certain shit should happen work your ass off and get yourself into lucasfilm Okay. Yeah, it's easy. Super Until easy. then, don't get mad at people because they don't write the script that's in your head. Yeah, I mean, even it's Ryan a lesson Johnson I've had to learn myself. Right. I mean, that, that's <laughs> why I hate the fucking prequels. Yeah, I mean, we all have to accept that we are not accomplished storytellers, and we can't just say, "Hey, here's a script that I wrote for Star Wars Episode Ten. You should right. make this. Yeah, it's take it to the bank. Happen. It'll make three billion dollars. It's perfect." Yeah. I mean, honestly, if you let fans write Star Wars movies, they'd be terrible. Yeah, they would probably It would be, be nothing rich. but Miller time the Moments. entire movie. It'd be like, yeah, fucking as soon as the crawl ends, Luke zaps a Star Destroyer out of space with his hands. <laughs> you get Han sitting there. I mean, he's just like fucking shooting everybody while flying through the castle run in, in 10 parsecs. You know, would, Leia would be it, levitating it, it, planets. <laughs> And keeping them in order, you know? Yeah. I mean, it would be the best Star Wars movies of all R2 time. R2 would be the emperor. <laughs> by by the fandom menace, you know, measuring. <laughs> they, they, would, they would fucking love them. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're not professionals. We strive to be professionals. We strive to be good storytellers. And, right. I, I just, know. I kind of like ma- making bad speculations. I know. You know I want to like, be known for really bad speculations. It's I mean, like, hey, we, we should... We'll just pivot to Mike Zero land. I was going to say even, that. <laughs> not even speculate, bro. Just fucking put it out there like just, it's real. <laughs> yeah, just say, hey, fucking red alert, this shit's happening. And then when it does it, it doesn't <laughs> red matter. Alert. Yeah, that's how it is. Yeah. Like big caps, like fucking guaranteed. Yeah. Anakin's force ghost mashed with Vader returning. Yeah. But the thing is, is when it doesn't happen, you've already put out 600 more videos since you put out that one. So everybody forgot about it. Whatever. All right. Move on to the next one. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, we're, we wish we could be Star Wars writers. We wish we could be Star Wars creators. We are not quite yet. We may write fan fiction in our heads. I may have written fan fiction when, you know, the, the acquisition of Disney was first happening. But guess what? I'm not trying to sell my scripts. Right. All we're trying to do to Disney. is be fans that are vocal. They're not stupid all the time. That other fans like to listen to. That's it. Oh, yeah. And the feedback we've been getting, it sounds like you guys sort of like listen to us. So keep it up. Spread the word. Pass it to a friend. It's not like you're giving them AIDS. You're just giving them a Star Wars podcast to listen to. You're giving them a great the Star dudes Wars up. podcast. Because you never know. Maybe they're a Star Wars artist, right? And they could get into our top five Star Wars artist features of the week segment, which is kicking off right now. Fantastic segue by Matthew there. That was Thank beautiful. Um, so, yes, top five Star Wars artists of the week. 
Last week, I know that we probably had some listeners. We probably had some people out there crossing their fingers. Is it my time in the top five? And we had all returning top five members. But this week, we do have some new blood in the top Before you go into this, Nick. Yeah. And you, you reminded me. We need more variety, my friends. Hashtag Star Wars Time Show. Tag at Star Wars Time Show. Yes. We, we've picked hashtags. up a, a good little following of, of accounts, but they're kind of the same accounts. And I love these accounts, and I have no problem sharing them once a week. But I like a little variety. I like seeing some new art myself, as you all like to find new art, new people to follow, new tips to learn. So get out. If you're listening and you haven't been doing it, you, you big accounts, please, too. Hashtag Star Wars Time Show. People need to see it in your post. Hey, hashtag and- Star Wars Time Show. Or just a tag. Tag's not my favorite because people can't see your tagging. But if you put that hashtag in there, people are start going, oh, so-and-so does Star Wars Time Show. Like Sir Dork, everything Kylo, they do it. Yeah. Get it out there. Come on. I mean, I, I can't spend all morning trying to hunt down stuff on my own. I need help, <laughs> damn it. And look, if you are a follower and you're not an artist, but you know some artists that have good work, why don't you throw like, hey, you know, comment to the artist like, hey, Star Wars Time Show. Tag that shit. Yeah. Tag it. Tag yeah. us in their comments. I, I, we, we, are, we are a primo Star Wars fan art account. I mean, we, we put our own stuff out there, our own news stories, our own videos, but we also heavily feature Mac Daddies and Mac Ladies that creates some badass art either with toys or through traditional methods of making art. So Indeed. sorry, buddy, go ahead. No problem. So let's just jump in here. And I got to say that, that these, these images here are some of the best, some of the best that I've seen since I've started doing a top five. And obviously we were going to have some killers in here that you guys are going to recognize. But the first one up today is a brand new member of the top five in a, in a pretty, you know, I don't know if this is a new account that you've just started to kind of feature. No, nah, he's method. um, he's a an Ohio guy. I mean, that's where okay. I, I live in Columbus. I, I don't know where he lives. I don't know him, but no, nah, he's been on the radar for a while. I mean, he's been featured on our Instagram account a few times. He just yeah. hasn't made the the, the major but, leagues. Yeah. So now he's in the majors, and we're talking about at Life of Guile, at, you know, Life of G I A L on Instagram. And he makes the top five with a fantastic scene recreation from the Mandalorian official trailer. Um, the scene where the Mando is holding his, you know, his rifle and is shocking one of the Trandoshan yeah. troopers. <laughs> I love it. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, he had to use boss cause there's, there's no other Trandoshan figures, it, yeah. but it works. I mean, I, I believe the Trandoshans now it makes sense. They are wearing kind of that little flight suit like Boss is doing. I'm guess they have to wear those, or it's just part of their jumpsuit. Uh, but I think they had blue blue outfits on. Yeah, but who cares? It doesn't matter because he does kind of nail it, and it's almost like the Trandoshan in this case, Bosk, is getting ready to be ejected backwards. I know. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The position that he's got Bosk in, and in this shot, like he, it does look like he's recoiling yeah. and he's about to <laughs> yeah. fall. He's like, hey, ho. Um, yeah, like, oh, shit, son. Um, but, I mean, this is a fantastic job, not only in the execution and the posing of the figures, but in the post-processing as well. Because if you look at, just look right where the tuning forks are on his rifle, you can see the a beautiful blue glow. And then also, there are like tiny, tiny sparks in there, too. And that just adds to yeah. the, the, the effect of this, you know, lightning coming out this electricity coming out and shocking, um, you know, boss here, but the trend ocean and the, yeah, I'm the guessing trailer. those are like stock flares or lightning images that he kind of composited in here and probably changed their blending mode. So yeah, I mean, that's always fun stuff. I, I need to actually find a pack of really good lens flare and, and an FX type of images to use in some of my shit. Cause I, I used to use, some apps, which are fantastic, that have this shit built in. But the motherfucking app, when you output your image, it reduces the resolution. And oh that is God. a I that is a no that. fucking go for me at this point in my photography yeah. career. I'm not – like, I already think my stuff looks like shit. So if you're going to start de resing it and making it smaller, fuck off. Yeah, that is uncalled for. But I, I would <laughs> love to – I would still use those apps. It, it, it's literally called FX. 
FX app. I mean, it's got all this type of shit. It's got flares, lightning, fire effects, and it just blends so perfectly. But I, I can't accept an app that's going to de-res my motherfucking shots. Yeah, that's uncalled for by the FX app makers. If you're listening to this, change that, that setting on your app there people what the fuck is wrong with you i'm sure there's like a jj abrams special effects pack out there that's just nothing but fucking lens flares so yeah, <laughs> like i'm sure i need that just like i need to learn how to use big boy photoshop but yeah i'm still not doing it here i even get fucking cc suite for free and i still won't learn photoshop i know i was like you're a fucking college an professor an you get that shit for free um but yes at life of guile on instagram yeah he's, he's um, a good follow i mean he's yes. an active poster as in sometimes two shots a day at least one shot a day uh he's figured out a way to not have to post during toy sessions like toy pops crap he gets a pretty good uh, reaction and, and follow just from regular posting. So hit him up. Definitely a good follow if you like some Star Wars art. Very good stuff. Next up, we have oh yeah one of our favorites at this point on the Star Wars Time Show Instagram, and that is an account that that I don't want to say we discovered, but um, that we definitely found in kind of a you know an earlier time well, i mean you could say we discovered for our followers for I mean, our I followers just, i, yes. I kind of randomly find stuff i get lucky sometimes where i'll go into like the instagram recommends because the ai knows my behavior it knows what i'm looking at yeah uh, it's funny I'll, I'll switch between my three instagram accounts on my phone and star wars time show its recommendations are nothing but toy photography <laughs> and star wars shit yeah hey what I mean, pop just a bunch of you know like toy shots and stuff my regular account, <laughs> fitness models. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep, so you that's... know what I'm looking at on my regular <laughs> Hey With Dot Matt? I'm looking at all those girls that post themselves that, like their bikinis or, or IG gym shoots and models. stuff like that. That's like a scumbag. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. You got to love the algo or the, the AI. It always knows what we're looking at. But anyways, oh, yeah. back to Phase Runner here. Yeah, so Phase Runner, I mean, he just... Phase Runner always knocks it out the park, but in this particular instance, he knocks it so far out the park that it's like mind blowing. So it, it looks see, like a still from the fucking set of the movie. Exactly, like the the realism of this is so like incredibly detailed right. that like you can't even. I mean, tell. You, you could argue with Phase Runner. You'd be like, motherfucker, are you spoiling something? Yeah, it's like, do you do you actually work on Star Wars? Right? Do, and do like, you know something <laughs> we don't? Yeah, because if you look at Phase Runner's account. He's only got, he has very few posts and we started featuring him the very first time that he made Star Wars related art. And since then, the guy's just been a killer in the Star Wars world. And with this one, it's fucking ridiculous because what we see is the Emperor's throne room. So the, this, this spiny rock craggy throne that we saw. Yeah, the, the one from the trailer. The, yeah, this, in the, the trailer. The Macquarie throne, the rock throne. Yeah, and we have the in the foreground ray walking up to this throne the the setting is just beautiful i don't know if fucking phase runner again works for lucasfilm and just hasn't told us but like this looks like where this fucking throne would be and then on the throne itself sits the emperor holding the the two the double bladed yeah. red lightsaber in his hands as if to say to ray you know, this is your destiny. And actually, well, well, here, read yeah. his caption. The caption is, in time, you yeah. will call me master. And if you go to his account, he actually has, he's animated this this little still and added in uh, a voiceover by Ian McDermott. And, and it's, it's the line, you know, in time, you will call me master. That line is in there. I mean, it's fantastic work all around by Phase Runner. And it's just his level of detail, his his concepting, his 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 mind for creating star Wars art is, is almost unparalleled when it comes to this style that we see here. I mean, it's fucking fantastic. And I like, we, we can't say enough about this guy's work or girl. I don't know if it's a guy or a girl, um, but phase runner, if you are listening, if you ever start to sell your, your wares, please reach out to us and what let you, us know. What do you think? I mean, do you think he draws all this this stuff? Or do you think, I mean, obviously some of it may be composites where he's cutting stuff out in Photoshop and stitching it together. Do you think, even just the lineup of all the Jedi right there, do you think yeah. he drew every one of those motherfuckers? I don't know. I mean, it's so, like, 
For the Jedi, I don't think so. Like the the Jedi, that's definitely like a composited thing where he just I don't think he drew that. He probably just photoshopped those all together. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out uh, but like the, this, the form of art here, like it, the one we're talking about with Palpatine. I mean, yeah, is that here, a a style outside of just calling it fucking lifelike? I don't know. It, like to me it looks like like super detailed and realistic digital painting like yeah, that I, is it's insane but yeah. it also looks like if you scroll down where he's doing shots of the superhero for ufc now that is reminiscent of a guy I, you may have heard of him he's pretty huge in, in comic book land but boss logic yeah boss logic yeah i know him. and he's just a master photoshopper like he'll take other people's art and create new stuff with that with you know effects and mashups and this that and the other thing uh, who cares? E- either way, Phase Runner's a fucking pimp. Yeah, like I, think, I don't I think I don't, we've come to that conclusion. I don't give a shit what type of art it is, except it's badass Star Wars fan art. That's all yeah. you need to know. I mean, you know, we we've had our first run at an interview with with Sir Dork here earlier when I was in the EU. I mean, if we if we you know pick the series back up, we may not have any any correlation or anything that we could talk to technically. Uh, with Phase Runner, but I like I think we need to get this this person on here and and break like tell like tell us how you do what you do because it's fucking credible. Like, no, we did. I mean, the whole <laughs> interview stuff is gonna start picking up. It's I can guarantee in 2020 it's gonna become a fixture. I'm I'm hoping to do at least one a month. Yeah, I so. think that's something we can commit to. I really liked it. I want to do more of it. Uh, hopefully we have one for this month. I actually need to reach back out to Dominic and see if we can settle on a date. But yeah, any of you listening, if you want to come on the show and, and kind of have a, a, a Star Wars fan artist feature segment, reach out. Yeah. Let us know. We Weird. are here for you. We Definitely. love hanging out with the fans. That's all we want to hang out with. I talk to this guy t- two times a week. I don't need to talk to him every day. Yeah, he's getting tired of it. <laughs> so. Let's get some, you know, let's get some new people on here. So, in all seriousness, though, if, if you want, if it sounds like something, you may want to talk talk about your Star Wars fandom and how it led into your your creating art or other homages to the Star Wars franchise. Reach out. Let us know. Yeah. And then you could be like Phase Runner 2 and have two guys essentially jerk you off on a podcast <laughs> because yeah. your art is awesome. Everybody wants to wants that in their life. Um, all right, next up, we have, oh, at Phase underscore Runner on Instagram for those of you who don't know. Hit it, hit it up. Um, next up is a staple uh, in our top five. I always, get, I always <laughs> smile when I see Jason's work come up because yes. – uh, I, I, it's weird to say this, but this guy who is already has way better imagination posing. I mean, just better photography skills in general than me. But at one point in time, this guy reached out to me, didn't know me. I didn't know him and asked for my advice on how to do this hobby. So I'll forever love JMB. His work is almost always going to get featured when he tags us. He's, he's in the same class as Papa P everything Sir Dork, uh, you know, you can almost say Black Series work more or less. When those guys are throwing up Star Wars shit, it, it's getting shared. And, and oh, Jason's yeah. in that group. And Jason, with this one, like you, you know, you mentioned in your, you know, in your list, his imagination, like his mind for creating fantastic it's photography. Brilliant. It's brilliant. Is, it's brought out here in such a way that you, you have, again, you can't go through a top five without Nick putting in troopers of some sort so what we have here is a full scene of troopers and they're all they're doing thriller they're doing yeah. the fucking thriller dance if you've seen the michael jackson music with video a thriller, with a red trooper and there is a red stormtrooper that is an actual figure he didn't paint it or customize it uh, it looks like he threw the pauldron on there that's about it but yeah i mean so that that even is <laughs> even a little touch like that i mean look at their poses they're actually doing it's the fucking, fucking dance yeah i know it's perfect like the way that that Jason concepted this, obviously, with with uh, you know, Halloween, took him three just, hours to set up and shoot. I mean, it's fucking, it's so cool to see. Because when I saw this, I was like, I mean, this was even before I was going through to pick the top five. I was just scrolling through our feed. I was like, oh yeah, that's making the top five. Like, yeah. hands well, did in, you no see question. his his Mandalorian portrait he did last night oh, or, no. or Monday night? 
Oh, I see it now. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's fucking art, dude. I mean, yeah. <laughs> this guy is literally, he's turbocharged himself ever since we, I first gave him a few tips. Yeah. It's it just, mean, it's, it's obscene. I'm, I'm happy for him. I mean, the guy's just killing it. He's getting a following. I mean, he has a defined style now, and that style is creative as fuck. Yeah, I know. It's wonderful and shit And he like executes. This. Like, here, here's the difference between a guy like Jason and myself. I, I'm never going to take three hours to set up a fucking shot. <laughs> never. I mean, maybe when I get older and I don't have a three-and-a-half-year-old that I feel bad that I'm neglecting on a weekend. It's just I, I can't do it. And, I think, and this is me self-owning why some of my shots aren't great. Because I get windows of time, I run out, I have no plan, I set up my fucking random dios, my black backdrop, and just go. I'm like, okay, I grab a figure, all right, it's Ray, okay, I could see Ray doing this, doing that, doing this, this, that. I'll spend an hour shooting Ray in various different poses and get a few shots out of that. And then move on to the next character. Where people like Jason or Plastic Action, I mean, they kind of sit down, plan shit out. And execute. It, yeah. And it shows. When you have a plan like Jason shot here, it shows. So oh, kudos, yeah. brother, for the dedication and the patience to pose every one of these little plastic mm-hmm. assholes. Because I guarantee you, I would have went nuts and probably taken a blowtorch to this entire setup. <laughs> oh, man. It's fantastic work. And, I mean, like, even better with the little porg flying in the air right next to a fucking raven i mean oh, yeah. all of it's great all of it's great so hey, this- go hit him up jason b michael and he does behind the scenes for pretty much every image he creates and you can see the the, the full scope of this setup i mean it's not the best part is there's a whole there's whole other shit going on outside of the frame of you yeah I mean, it's not like he just set these guys up so you could see them i mean there there's a whole fucking scene going on <laughs> yeah, I mean, like right behind them, you can't even see it in the shot. Like, yeah, there's there's a whole yeah, like you said, a whole another scene back there. It's fucking crazy. So, Jason B. Michael on Instagram, fantastic follow. The guy is a killer. Like, he's Matt just mentioned. a genuine nice dude too. So, Jason, one of these days, I'm gonna try to do a three hour shoot, a three hour setup, and execute an actual good shot. Versus the random portrait bullshit I throw out there. Yes. yes. You have motivated me. <laughs> All right. Next up in our top five <laughs> is is a new, is a new I can't, top five. A, anytime I see a Rampo, I, I just have to laugh. I, I, I love it because this is exactly how I would see 3PO Rampo if he went Rampo. So like what we have... Uh, it's coming from Photog Trooper, so P H O T O G Trooper, all one word, on Instagram, and it is. It's the Rampo shot. It's he's got it's C three P O red eyes, Chewie's bowcaster, <laughs> Chewie's bandolier across his his hey, way. There's someone chest. else in this shot, Nick. Do you see him? Oh my God! Is that fucking? That's uh, Babu. <laughs> wait, really? It's Babu Frick, the little yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, I was I was looking in the t- the bottom right corner, and I was like, at first I was like, is that a tiny Bausch? Because it's hard to see yeah, the or face, like a like a first order garden gnome. Yeah, like, and then when you said it's Babu <laughs> Frick, I was like, holy shit, it is Babu Frick. Yeah, that's a little Babu. That's a nice oh little my. touch there. I, I'm going with Babu took out the first order trooper that's laying on his face. Yeah, and then, actually, fuck it. Babu killed them both, and, and then, C-3PO's just posing. Yeah, he took the credit, you know. Right. Ran. Yeah, he's just got his action <laughs> pose on. But this is a fantastic shot. The way that it's staged, so we're, we look like, you know, we look like we're in a, you know, a hallway to a, some sort of Star Destroyer, and then you have a, a dead First Order trooper slumped up against the wall on the left side, and you got one face down dead right next to Babu Frick. Both of their blaster, you know, rifles are on the ground. And then you have, as Matt said, Babu off in the tiny, you know, tiny bottom right of the screen. And then your primary figure is the victorious Rampo. Yeah, he even has like his... a hero pose. You yeah. Know, like he's a fucking pimp. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this yeah, was. Yeah, I got a bowcaster. So what? <laughs> I mean, this was a fantastic um, piece of concepting here by Photog Trooper. Um, the atmospheric effects, even though, the, you know, the atmospheric effects are probably um, not as heavy as you've seen in other shots. Like it does have a good like it looks like this bowcaster was just fired because you can see the smoke 
from it and you know this was a it's a really fun shot here and like matt said anytime you see rampo you just you know it, it's a little bit more special so and because i spoiled it for myself i know exactly how c-3po ends up like this but I will yeah not, i will not go down that path we we know things because we've read things yeah um so photox <laughs> Photog Trooper on Instagram, fantastic shot here. Fantastic Rampo representation. Well done, sir. Okay, moving on to the final one of our top five. This is another new um, top five entry, and it's from Ivan Tot underscore PF. So I-V-A-N-T-O-T underscore PF. And what we have is a... It is just a sinister, badass representation of Darth Vader. I mean, like, there's no, it, there's no fucking, you know, huge setup. There's no big scene being done here. This is a portrait style. Yeah, man, it's my type of, of shooting. Of, yeah. I, I mean, Ivan, Ivan excels at, at portrait photography. I mean, he, he, uh, he's worked at the Exclude Collective with me, so I, I've kind of, you know, tossed some things around with him, seen some of his work. Because he lives in Japan, he gets all these figure arts releases early and cheap. So this is the new, I believe, the new Vader figure arts figure. Uh, so he's not. A, it's not a black series. That's why he's got a little more posability. And it looks like they gave him a soft goods cape there. But yeah, he's Ivan's just a good, a good portrait photographer. I mean, this is what I like to do. I don't quite get the uh, reactions that Ivan gets on his portraits, but that's fine. We, we've we kind of figured that out, that I should just blow up my whole fucking account and start over if I really want to get a fresh start with action figures and not Funko Pops, but whatever. I've given up on that fight. Who gives a shit? No one likes my stuff. I like it. I share it. We move on. But, yeah, I, Ivan's a, a fantastic portrait guy. Always good poses, and uh, he's really good with the lighting, getting different color splashes to go on. Yeah, that's what I really like about this shot is you have the the glow of the lightsaber on the bottom half of the of the you know the picture, and then at the top half you have this kind of blue gray haze going on in the background with some you know some some cinders, some you know little bits of fire there off to the sides. I mean, it's just one of those shots like when you have a really well posed, intimidating Vader shot. There's almost nothing better because he is just such a a you know a, a a drawing figure like he's such an you know draw like he just draws you in with, yeah he's imposing i mean that that's yeah. the beauty of vader he's one of my favorite characters and characters to shoot because as as nick said it's not like vader is a big actiony type of guy anyways i mean he pretty much pissed all that away when he forgot about the rules of the high ground right i mean yep. he, he lost a lot of his mobility when he was turned into a quadriplegic uh, so Vader is good for just having imposing poses, just standing there. I mean, you just fucking stand Vader there and he looks like a badass. You know what I mean? He, he just always looks like he could kill you in the snap of his finger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, literally he could just close his fingers and choke. Yeah, no, he, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're exactly right. He could kill you with the snap of his finger. There's no very, doubt about that. Very easily. Thanos like if you would, if you would take that reference, but um, yeah, I mean, that wraps up our top five for this week. Ivan Tot PF underscore PF on Instagram. Very great follow. Like Matt mentioned, he works with him over at the Exco Collective. Um, if you go through his stuff, it's just a lo- lots of great portrait photography. Um, you know, his most recent images of the Ghostbusters, which is fantastic. I fucking love Ghostbusters. So who are you going to call? Follow. Ghostbusters. No, 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 no. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Back to the Star Wars franchise. Yeah. So we can go. All right, my friends. Well, as Nick said, that kind of ends the top five. And if this is something you want to get mixed up in, either you know, interviewing about your Star Wars love or your photography or your art, or if you just want to try and get featured on the top five, remember, you got to tag your shots on Instagram, Star Wars Time Show and or tag us on your shots. Uh, it's going to probably go longer if you use the hashtag because we like that type of stuff. We want our hashtag to go from 6.8,000 to 68,000. 
right? So help us out there. And as always, at the end of the cast, you know it's time for my spiel. Get on over to StarWarsTime.net. And why do we need you there? Well, we want you to see our website and the content we put out. We're not just two schmoes that sit here and do a podcast. We do other stuff. We do YouTube videos. We do news. We, we comment on the news. We essentially give you everything you need to know about the Star Wars universe. All right? It's all there for you. StarWarsTime.net. Plus, you can get subbed up to the podcast on whatever platform you want. Spotify, we got it. iTunes, we got it. Stitcher, guess what? We got that, too. And for all you Google assholes, we also have Google and Android and email. It's insane how many ways you can listen to the show, including YouTube, which you can subscribe to that as well on StarWarsTime.net. Capiche? You got the message? All right. There's always time for Star Wars Time. And remember, if you listen to the Star Wars Time show, the Force will be with you always. (laughs) 